Monday, January 21st, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, this next video is an observation that was observed back on the 18th, about three days ago, right in the middle of the Cascadia subduction zone up here in the Pacific Northwest. And anytime we see strange geological events, and that's what I'm calling this because simply I don't know what else to call it, um, it's worth noting the Cascadia subduction zone is a mega thrust fault that extends for 1,000 kilometers all the way from Vancouver down to Northern California. In fact, I'm going to take you to the area on Google Earth that this observation was made, which was right here. Here's the map of the subduction zone right in here. And right here is the area of the unusual observation that was emailed to me a couple of days ago. And the event, what I'm calling it, is a geological event because it wasn't created by anything man-made that the person knows of. They wish to remain anonymous. They are local in this area here. They're very familiar with the river and how the river works and what goes up and down the river and particularly waves on this river. A couple of days ago they noticed some very unusual waves on the river that were not created by any type of fishing vessel or barge and they were actually kind of startled at what they were seeing. And it could have been a sign of something bigger. And given this location here, it's in the middle of a mega thrust fault zone, it's definitely worth noting. So anyway, I want to get to the email that the, the person sent to me, and it goes like this. On January 18th, 2019, around 9 a.m., Columbia River in southwest Washington. The river had been smooth and flat, reflecting like a mirror. No ships, no boats, no vessels of any kind in almost an hour. And then something strange happened. And here's what occurred. Some waves came rippling, some fairly large waves for this river came rippling across towards the viewer. And here's the video that the viewer sent to me. And she also sent me a video of what normal waves look like. And these waves came out of nowhere. And like she's saying, that is weird. She was very taken back by this. And these came out of nowhere. So these were instigated by something. And the only thing that it could have been is something on the ground underneath. Look at that. Underneath the water. There was a geological event that occurred right there. It wasn't necessarily an earthquake. Something changed in this area. And it created these waves, and the water mimicked the energy. That's what water does. Water will mimic energy it feels. Here's these waves. On the left, you're seeing what she sent to me were normal waves that she sees all the time when boats and vessels go by. These were something different. She had never seen anything like these before in this area. Again, on the left, normal. These are not normal. And I extend outward in this video, and you can see it's very smooth way over there. And these waves begin to propagate. And she said that they had occurred for probably 60 seconds before she even began videotaping them. So something unusual happened in the middle of the Cascadia subduction zone on January 18th around 9 a.m. I don't think it was an earthquake. It was right in this area here just above the main subduction zone. And once again, this area has in the past produced megaquakes. They expect it to produce another one. They just don't know when. Something definitely influenced this water. It kind of had similarities to a ocean wave. Um, at times, having white caps, it was very out of place. It was as if a large ship had gone through the Columbia River and she said there hadn't been a, a vessel go through here in over an hour so there was no reason for the water to be disturbed the way it was it was almost like some strange gravity wave was going through the water as she was standing here filming this incident 
that was highly, highly unusual in a very, very active area that's not only subductive zone active, I mean, it's got a mega thrust fault right there in the center of this area. There's also many volcanoes in this area. So a lot going on, a lot of things, I guess, that could have caused this. Don't know. Right now, it's still kind of a mystery. What exactly happened here on this day, I don't know. But the viewer was quite adamant about these waves, and their, their origin is unknown at this point in time. And this is another email that the young lady sent me. She said, this is what waves look like after ships go by, and that was the video that I just showed you. And this is what the water generally looks like when it's been disturbed or it feels energy from a ship or some other type of vessel. And she said, granted, I started recording a little late as the water was beginning to calm down. And what she's referring to are these waves here. They were actually a little bit bigger. That's why she was so startled. And you can clearly see the difference in the wave patterns from this video to the one previously sent. This is a channel used by cargo ships multiple times a day to get from the Pacific Ocean to the ports in Longview and further south. I am familiar with the wave patterns caused by ships and boats and even wildlife. This here was something that she had never seen. So it's just something worth noting, guys. There may have been some unusual movement in the Cascadia subduction zone. Once again, that is a mega fault, or I'm sorry, a mega thrust fault in the Pacific Northwest that's been very, very quiet for a very, very long time. And that is a big, strong subduction zone. And I want to thank you guys for sharing your pictures of the lunar eclipse last night. We tried to get a look at it from out here in southeast Phoenix, but it was much too hazy. The sky was filled with a very thick haze that persisted clear into the early morning hours. I was up at 4 o'clock this morning, and it was still extremely uh, hazy, almost uh, overcast like fog. But here's a picture from S. Reed. I'm not exactly sure of the location. This was sent in via email. Um, you can find the remaining pictures at the website, MrMBB333.com. There's just way too many to share, but I appreciate them all. I'm going to share a few of them here during this video. This was sent in by Cryptic. That was a uh, very good picture of the lunar eclipse. Another one there, Cryptic. This was sent in by Nick. This is a uh, picture of what's called Earthshine. You can see that reflection right there coming back from the moon. That uh, reflection is known as Earthshine. Really neat. That was taken by Chris from North Texas. This was taken by Holly from Indianapolis. They had clear skies. David from South Dakota, clear skies. And you can see how bright that full moon was and this is unedited by the way all of these are unedited this is exactly how I received them and I've had a lot of people say how bright the moon was at uh, right before the eclipse this was another photo from South Dakota by David awesome photograph you guys did a good job Chris North Texas once again Great picture. Ben, not exactly sure of the location. You can see how the top of the moon's got a bluish color to it. I heard that from more than one person, how their perception of the moon at one time was blue on the top during the eclipse. So, kind of neat when you see that. This was sent in by Glorima from Puerto Rico. So, a lot of good pictures that were sent in. Again, you can find more pictures at the website, MrMBB333.com, in the Sky Phenomenon Photo Gallery. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.